I made a list of 10 players that walked away from the NFL draft as winners. These are veterans, and I'm going to spoil the plot here. Nine of the 10 of them are running backs because this was such a weak running back class outside of Bijan, Jameer Gibbs. I don't know if anyone else really is like going to be a tangible difference maker right away. You can make the argument for all of them. But the biggest winners of the NFL draft were veteran running backs. A lot of veteran running backs that could have easily seen their way out of the league or became backups or backups to backups. And now we have to reconsider where we're drafting them in fantasy football because they look like they're going to be the lead backs once again in their offense. So that's what we're doing here today. We're talking about 10 winners, mainly running backs. There's actually one tight end in here that walked away from the NFL draft. Mwah. You know what else is uh, the fact that Underdog Fantasy keeps giving us free fucking pick em lines on their app. We have Jalen Brown, 0.5 for tonight's game. The Boston Celtics, again, you don't have to be a basketball fan to know that he's going to score one single point in the game tonight, okay? So go take Jalen Brown on the Underdog app. If you've never downloaded it, the link down below in the description is the first link down there. Use promo code BDGE if it is your first time depositing, and they're going to hit you with a 100 percent deposit match you throw down 10 on the app they're going to give you 20 to play with and now you have an absolutely free square in Jalen Brown Jalen Brown going off these 10 players going off in 2023 fantasy football tuck your shirt in damn I 100% should have been wearing short ass shorts after Noah's video on Wednesday that would have been a fucking plot twist and a half First guy up on this list, and this is in no particular order. I will be making a top 24 fantasy running back tiered video sometime next week, but I obviously want to let the draft come to us. J.K. Dobbins, big winner from the NFL draft. They didn't draft the running back. It is J.K. Dobbins. It is whatever Gus Edwards has left in the tank and Justice Hill. And Gus showed us nothing last year. But J.K. Dobbins, on the other hand, was obviously coming back from the knee surgery the year prior. All the vibes on the reports of him coming back were terrible. He was an easy, easy fade last year, but he looked great towards the end of the year. You know what's funny about these injuries? When they tell you it's a 12-month injury, and then they hit the 12-month mark, and then they start looking better once they do that. Crazy how the fucking math adds up. Look great down the stretch, okay? He averaged over 100 yards in scrimmage, breaking off big runs, even if they looked really weird and he was like waddling at times. Um, from week 14 through the playoffs, he averaged over 100 yards from scrimmage. Todd Munkin's coming in as the OC, uh, and Todd Munkin was the former OC for the Georgia Bulldogs, and they heavily utilized their running backs over there in Georgia. Uh, you look back last year, Kenny McIntosh had 43 catches. The year prior, James Cook and Kenny McIntosh combined for 50 catches, so I very heavily uh, expect his offense to... Obviously run through Lamar, but if they're going to get an uptick in passing game from Todd Munkin coming in and adding these passing weapons, I expect that to trickle down to the running back as well. So J.K. Dobbins, big winner. Joe Mixon, also a very big winner, staying in that uh, division. There's a lot of uh, reports and rumors kind of flying around in Cincinnati that they might cut Joe Mixon to save some money against the cap. I don't know. I don't know. The closer we get the summer, the less likely that seems like it's going to happen. Maybe they do cut Joe Mixon and bring in a veteran like Zeke. I could, I could still see that happening. But as of right now, post NFL draft, where we didn't even know if Mixon was going to make it this far, uh, big winner. They they drafted Chase Brown in the fifth round, so there's not real draft capital behind him. Samaji Pirine is gone. Travion Williams has been in the league for like four years at this point. I don't even know if he has four carries on this team. Chris Evans, whatever, you know, as long as Mixon isn't cut, I, it's wheels up for a running back who's going to get, you know, 18 plus touches in one of the league's best offenses. So I still think there's a chance something else moves in the Cincinnati backfield by the time the summer actually hits. But for right now, where we're standing, Mixon is a crazy value in uh, in best ball underdog. I think he's like an eighth round pick number three on this list and maybe the biggest winner, Tony Pollard out there in Dallas. They have not resigned Zeke. There was a report that came out yesterday that Zeke is unlikely to resign in Dallas, which I'll believe it when I see it. But for right now, the only running back that the Cowboys drafted was Deuce Vaughn. It's kind of funny because Deuce Vaughn's father is like on the coaching staff and they said that anytime they talked about him in like prospect meetings, he would have to leave the room. But if you're unfamiliar with Deuce Vaughn coming out of Kansas State, uh, he is five foot five, 179 pounds. So the Cowboys are not serious with this pick. I'm just I'm just curious as to what they're doing in this backfield. So they have Tony Pollard who's obviously going to be the one there. Zeke's not there. They're a ground and pound team. Mike McCarthy wants to ground and pound, but they need a bigger back. So Deuce Vaughn is, I get it. He's a dog. Yeah, have an original thought for once, please. I think there's a chance that, I mean, like, listen, I don't know. For now, I mean, geez, right? Like, 
Pollard might finish as the overall RB1 on, on like a per touch basis. I don't know how many running backs in the NFL were better than Pollard last year. Yards per carry, yards after contact, explosive plays, breakaway runs, catching the ball. Like he could do it all. He's clearly a three down back and operating behind uh, arguably, you know, still top eight, top 10 offensive line there in Dallas. So Pollard, big winner for the fact that they did not draft like a bigger back to to compliment him. Uh, I put Najee Harris in here in Pittsburgh. I don't I don't know how big of a winner he is. I guess like this, this total offseason, I feel like is going to be good for him he was kind of miserable last year but if you look at how he finished the year he was really strong they obviously drafted the lineman in the first round that will shore up the offensive line they brought in some free agent offensive linemen I still think Jalen Warren's going to play a big part, but, you know, Najee Harris is dealing with the foot injury. I also don't like to invest too much into, like, rumors of injuries and all that kind of stuff, but I think the addition to the offensive line, the offense just taking a step up overall means that Najee Harris will he'll have a good year. I don't think he's, like, ready to fall off or anything like that. He'll get a lot of touches. He won't catch a ton of passes. That was, like, one of the big problems with him going into last year that people were getting, like, overly hyped about because of his rookie year. Um, but right now, I think Najee Harris, because that offensive line has just been so bad the last couple of years for him to run behind, he is a big winner from the draft. And going back to Cincinnati, all right, I did say, I said there was going to be one, said there was going to be one tight end on this list, Irv Smith. Irv Smith out in Cincinnati. Since he was linked to just about every tight end in this draft, they were going to use their first, second, and third round picks on them and didn't walk away from the draft with any of them. If you look at the depth chart in Cincinnati, it is Irv Smith, Devin Asiasi. I forget. I don't even remember how to say the fucking... I, and I say, I, how do you say those bowls? I eat these all the time. Why can't I say it right now? I'm going to stop embarrassing myself. Drew Sample, Devin Asi, whatever, that the Patriots drafted a couple of years ago. It's There's not even like a random like, oh, this guy's kind of athletic. Like maybe... Worst case scenario, this is the guy that kind of eats into Irv Smith's role. Like, there's not the Hayden Hurst there. There's not the C.J. Ozuma there. There's not, like, those guys there. It's literally just Irv Smith, and it's wheels up if he could stay healthy. And obviously, that's been the big problem with him. He's just 24 years old. This dude is so young. It feels like Irv Smith's been in the league forever, but he's 20 fucking four, and he's athletic. And these are the dudes at tight end you want to take shots on. He's young. He's athletic in a high upside offense. They're going to score a ton. I think he's a great late round flyer at tight end as we've basically said every single year that he's been in the league but Irv Smith really really liked the kid Damian Pierce running back for the Texans now if you look at holistically this offense what they did in the draft it was it was a combination of not drafting a running back but also what they did with the offense just big upgrades across the board like Damian Pierce is now in an offense where CJ Stroud will operate as the quarterback uh they bring in Shaq Mason somehow I don't know how they push that fucking deal it was like a seventh round sixth round swap to get Shaq Mason they draft a couple linemen uh, obviously, they bring in Robert Woods. John Mechie's going to be back. Dalton Schultz was brought in. Uh, they bring in Tank Dell through the draft. So this is going to be a very, very new, kind of like up-tempo style of offense. And like I said, they didn't draft anyone at running back. They did bring in Devin Singletary to be like the complement to Damian Pierce, but he's going to be a breather back, man. Uh, I think as long as Pierce comes into the season with his head on straight and understanding what it takes from a conditioning standpoint, he's going to be a beast this year. And I want to I wanna like dive into what I mean by that. You got to remember looking back to his time at Florida. Damian Pierce was a four-year player at Florida, never went above 106 carries. Obviously demolished that last year with Houston. But at Florida, he was never a workhorse. He never carried the ball more than 106 times. So now you look at being thrown into the Houston offense to be a workhorse. There's a whole different level and style of conditioning that you need to have in order to be able to sustain that for an entirety of the year. And I think we saw some gas kind of leak out the tank from Pierce towards the end of the year. And the fact, I mean, the offense was just so bad. So they were asking him to do so much. And now Rex Burkhead isn't there to take the passing down work. And maybe it's Singletary, but I don't think Singletary. I, Burkhead feels like a dude that you just like throw into the the pass catching role no matter what because that's like all he could do at this point Singletary does feel more like a a breather back but I think Pierce is good enough to be the guy in this backfield on all three downs and again if he puts the work in if he if he learns from year one what it takes to be the three down back in an offense for the entirety of the year if he really really puts the work in this offseason I think he's going to have a, a monster 2023 season so Pierce big winner for me the fact that they didn't use you know like a day two pick on a running back back same thing with Rashad White out here in Tampa Bay as gross as it feels to be back in on Rashad right uh, Rashad White right now their running back room is it's it's bare it is bare it is newborn baby cheeks Chase Edmonds they brought in and Chase Edmonds is like he just uh, that's all I can say about Chase Edmonds right now Keyshawn Vaughn Patrick Laird like Leonard Fournette is out of there He's not coming back. It's, it's just a tough scene out there in Tampa Bay. If Baker can get his shit together, this offense will honestly be okay. If Baker can operate at like a decent level, like a, a 
an average QB in the NFL, maybe a tiny bit below average. I think that's where this, I think, however, Baker finishes as a quarterback. If he's like the QB 21, this offense will be around the 21st offense. If he's like the QB 18, I think they'll be around there, okay? Not great, not great, maybe top 20, okay? And I think White having a three-down skill set means that his upside obviously still there. And you just look at the, uh, listen, let's get the Sean Tucker shit out of the way. Sean Tucker went undrafted. They picked him up after the NFL draft. And everyone's going to be like, it was the health conditions. If if he can't play football, you're not using a roster spot. In him. If he can't play football, you're not picking him up afterward. He could play football. They just didn't think he was as good of a prospect as most of you guys did. Sean Tucker, I think, just as likely to get cut from the team as he is to make the team even. And even when you make the team as an undrafted free agent, your path to playing time is so much more difficult than someone who was drafted in the third round like Rashad White was, okay? So let's get the Sean Tucker fairy tale out of the fucking way here, all right? Can he make the team? Sure, because that depth chart is horrible. But he's got so many steps to go just to be an impact player on this offense. So I think Rashad White, we don't know what Rashad White is, right? Everyone's uh, really quick to be like, he was terrible last year. He's not a good running back, et cetera. He's got the three-down skill set, right? And this was a point I made often when we were talking about Rashad White going into the draft last year. He played two years at JUCO and then became like the starting running back at a real college. He is someone that needed time to develop, right? And when you get thrown into a Tom Brady offense as a rookie, you don't like you don't have a leash to do that. So he needed a couple of years. I think he needed some years of experience to become a better runner. He was a raw runner. He was a great athlete, three down skill set, but a raw runner. And I think we'll see him take a step up and be better as more opportunities come and the offense leans a little bit more on him. That's how you make diamonds. Pressure. Pressure makes diamonds. You can combust, you know? You take a rock and you put too much pressure on it and it goes or it can make a diamond. And I think that's what we'll see from Rashad White. Uh, also, Isaiah Pacheco out there in Kansas City. I don't really know what to make of this. I've said for a while now, probably for the last like month or so, that it makes no sense that they would let Jarek McKinnon walk. And they did just resign Jarek McKinnon. So I kind of just want pieces of both, both of these guys. Pacheco and McKinnon were both awesome for Kansas City uh, last year. Not like amazing fantasy players. Uh, they both had stretches where they were really, really good, especially McKinnon. Going to be tough to predict on a week-to-week -week basis, but they're just dudes that you kind of throw in your flex spot and let them you know, run rampant because there will be games where they both score multiple touchdowns. They didn't draft any running back. They haven't brought in any like real extra competition for Pacheco as the early down guy, so I think Pacheco will, will have the similar roles where Pacheco is the starter, the first and second down back, a guy that can contribute in passing situations if needed, uh, will be heavily involved in the red zone near the goal line, and then McKinnon will take all the third down roles, uh, two-minute drill, four-minute drill, catching passes in the red zone as well. So I think both of them have a ton of upside. You just want pieces in this offense. So I think both of them are winners, the fact that they didn't draft any running back uh, at any point in the draft. And then James Conner, man, I like want no part of James Conner, but it almost mathematically doesn't make sense not to draft him, right? Like they don't draft a single running back. Their depth chart is Keontae Ingram and like Corey Clement. Now, obviously the Cardinals offense in this team is just going to be an absolute shit show this year. And James Conner typically misses a lot of time, but he gets hella touches when he's on the field and he scores a lot. He caught 46 passes in just 13 games last year. He's just so heavily utilized. The Cardinals trust him so much, and there's just no one to take work away from him. It, it, it's not a situation where I expect them to add a veteran because what kind of veteran wants to go play on the Cardinals right now? Like veterans like Zeke want to go contend. That's why I could see him in Cincinnati. I could see him in Buffalo, whatever, right? Um, Not Buffalo now that they signed Latavius Murray, but you get the point. These, these veteran running backs who have a year or two left in the league want to go compete for a championship right away. So it's not like they're going to be adding the Dalvin Cooks of the world to the Arizona Cardinals roster. So it's just, it's just a runway for James Conner to get as many touches as this man can fucking handle right now. And they're going to need it because Kyler's not going to be back for a while if he even plays at all this year. So James Conner, where he's going, is a fact. I'm not like overly excited. I'm not expecting a top 10 finish or anything. The ceiling is definitely not there just because the offense stinks and he's getting older and he gets hurt a lot. But he's just like an RB2 probably, right? Like what he's been the last bunch of years. Going to get all the scoring opportunities, etc. And the last player is DeAndre Swift. He gets traded in the middle of the draft for a fourth round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, a lot of moving parts here, but they they were just never going to use him in that Detroit offense to a high volume. And I don't really blame him because he kept getting hurt. And that might happen again in Philadelphia. But if there was any area or opportunity or place to land where I kept saying he was going to end up in K uh, Kansas City and go crazy, Philadelphia right there. Their offensive line 
impeccable. It's it's an offense that just absolutely donates fantasy points to its running back. He's not that dissimilar from uh, Miles Sanders. Same size, same explosiveness. I would say Swift is a better pass catching back. And this was one of the reasons I was saying, like, don't get too high on Rashad Penny. Like, the money that they gave him does not signal any sort of loyalty. Same thing with Damian Harris and Buffalo. They went and signed Latavius Murray. You know, he might not make the roster, but these are things that happen when... These guys are not drafted by them, not drafted early. They're signing for agency for a million dollars. They're not looked at as the go-to guy. It's a depth piece. It's really, really smart. Harry Roseman put together a backfield of DeAndre Swift, Rashad Penny, dudes who are wildly efficient. Like if you look back at DeAndre, I'm going to be drafting a lot of DeAndre Swift. If you look back at last year, yes, he was hurt and didn't have a ton of volume per touch, per carry, per catch basis, top 10 running back across the board. There's not an efficiency metric that you could find where he was not good, where he was not great. Um, DeAndre Swift's a great player. He just needs to get it together for a year. Why not with the Philadelphia Eagles? They're going to have so many scoring opportunities. And yes, I get it. Jalen Hurts takes a lot of the rushing touchdowns. I think one, like it still led to Miles Sanders having double digit touchdown scores on the ground. DeAndre Swift will be far more involved via the passing game than Miles Sanders was. Miles Sanders literally had like fucking 73 receiving yards. 73. There's not a single running back outside of Jamal Williams in the top 25 fantasy running backs that had fewer receiving yards. And he had 10 more targets than Jamal Williams did. And he had like five, five more yards. I also think, and this might just be, I'm just, you know, wasting my breath here because it might just be an impossible thing to stop. But you'd have to think that the amount of times that Jalen Hurts ran in those touchdowns on the one yard line, like, I mean, there were rumors that they were going to change the whole rule because of him. You have to think that every team is going to just strictly focus on that when they're on the one-yard line, opening up things for the running backs. Again, that's very just projection-based. I have no idea if that's a real thing, but it would make sense. As a D coordinator, the Eagles get... How many situations are you in on an NFL field where you actually know what the play is going to be? You're, uh, maybe it doesn't work. Maybe your preparation, maybe your planning for it doesn't work whatsoever, but at least teams are going to come in. If they're on the one-yard line, you know what Philly's doing. They are running the ball with Jalen Hurts. At least defenses are going to zone in. It'll make it a lot easier for them to hand it off to other running backs uh, in Philadelphia with wide open lanes on the outside. Swift is fast. Swift has three down size. Swift can catch the ball. Uh, we have not seen the best days of Swift yet. I still think they're ahead of us, and what better offense to do it in than in Philadelphia, okay? So those are 10 winners from the NFL draft, non-rookies, all vets, all running backs outside of Swerve and Irv Smith. We have J.K. Dobbins, Joe Mixon, Tony Pollard, Najee Harris, Irv Smith, Damian Pierce, Rashad White, Isaiah Pacheco, James Conner, and DeAndre Swift. All right. Make sure you go grab that underdog line. 0.5 points for Jalen Brown. It's one bucket. One bucket. And you're a winner on underdog. Use promo code BDGE. We'll get you a 100% deposit match. I love you. Um, if you got your rookie drafts coming up this weekend, we have our rookie draft guide out right now. We have rookie rankings, super flex, one quarterback, rookie profiles, very in-depth, all of it available on bdg.co. Hit the button that looks like this down below. Subscribe to the channel if you are new, and we'll see you uh, later today for an underdog best ball stream. So make sure you got notifications turned up.